With ETF Echo right around the corner and a possible plan of attack to revamp the internals for the Division 2, I wanted to get my thoughts out and publish to YouTube as a possible solution to all of our concerns with the game that has so much potential, but at this point has proven its own worst enemy. Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer back with another commentary, and I think we can all agree that The Division 2 is currently struggling to break free of its own internal framework and develop into something greater than it has been allowed to become. And this concept came to me this morning as I was getting ready for work, as all the issues, all the complaints, and all the remedies to fix The Division 2 really come down to one simple four-letter word. But before I reveal my epiphany, if you like what you see and want to stay informed to my latest YouTube postings, please take just a second to smash that sub button and click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. Alright, so let's get back to this concept of how to best fix the Division 2. And once it came to me, it really seemed quite simple. Although for the dev team moving forward, they are going to have to work overtime to fix this issue. No, I might as well not hold you in suspense any longer. The basic four-letter word I am thinking about, the answer to anything holding back the Division 2, is simply loot. Now, before I lose you and you switch off the video cursing my name as a clickbaiter, hear me out. Because over the next however many minutes this video will go for, I will do my absolute best to convince you of my theory and that it really is the root of everything that is currently holding the Division 2 from progressing. And no matter what you may think the root cause of what is causing the Division 2 to underachieve, I will be able to come back in and tie it into my theory of loot. So let's get started. At its core, the Division series are both looter shooter games. Although they tie in elements from other genres, both Division games are all about shooting and looting. Currently in the Division 2, we have the shooting. Sure, there are issues with some net code and hit registration errors, but for the time being, the gunplay, weapon models, weapon sounds, and general feel of the weaponry all seem to work. Since the shoot in Loot and Shoot is in a solid place, let's now turn our attention to the loot in this equation. And well, it is in a really bad place. And this is where it has all gone wrong for the Division 2, and to be more precise, the loot at World Tier 5 is where the issue lies. Now all of us remember the 1 to 30 grind, and for the most part, it was well paced and enjoyable. Collecting the increasingly better levels of loot as we leveled up our agents all while exploring DC for the first time was well done, and if this is where The Division 2 ended, I would say that the game was a success. Throw in the first four world tiers in the new unlock and stronghold system and the game was doing a lot right. And then we hit the world tier 5 catastrophe. And this is where my theory of everything that plagues the Division 2 begins. Everything, and I truly mean everything about this game, is tied in some way, shape, or form to loot. And when the loot models in World Tier 5 are not designed properly, well, it leads us to the position we are in now. Within this term, loot, are many different subheaders, like gear, RNG, exotics, replayability, and even PvP can be tied into this main idea. So let me first show PvP some much needed attention and dive into the issues plaguing this portion of the game. First up, let me preface this portion of my video. PvP is something I actually enjoy, and although I don't actively stream it or post content about it, I do participate in it and have since Div 1. Okay, so issue number one with PvP, and more specifically the dark zones, are the lack of incentives. I mean, reasons for agents to enter the zones and actively engage the PvEVP loop. Can you think of any other reason to enter the DZ other than you want to test out your normalized PvP build versus other agents? I mean, there's nothing unique in the loot tables that is specific to the Dark Zone that can't be found in the LZ. There is no better gear that can be found in the Dark Zone, y'all brand set gear excluded, that a player can't loot speedrunning a hard difficulty daily mission. I recently streamed several hours of DZ South and actively attempted to extract every single piece of contaminated gear I could find. I picked up everything, gear, mods, weaponry, in an attempt to get something worthwhile. Something I could fit into one of my builds, and I can honestly say that after extracting multiple times and checking my DZ stash, there was absolutely nothing that I ended up keeping. It was the same gear across the board that I could find running missions, mod routes, or from completing projects. 
Now you could argue, and certainly have a valid argument, that the DZs are too small, and I agree with that. The player counts are too low, and I also agree with that. But if they were constantly full at 12 players, or even if they could just raise the player counts to say 20, you'd probably feel differently. And what is the best way to do that? Loot. Incentivize players to step outside their comfort zones and get into the DZs to chase after those specific targeted gear pieces. Let's get some global event type modifiers, triple DZ drop weekends, double XP whatevers, you get the point. With only 50 rank ups available, and honestly they go by really quickly, no DZ specific loot a player can target and no real hype behind the dark zones, why would players ever want to go in there other than the aforementioned normalized PvP? Now, I will go into issues plaguing the DZ later in this video, but for now, let's move on. And that leads me to my next loot-related issue with the Division 2, gear and builds. Moving into gear, and this has to be the section of the game that if fixed, could really breathe new life into the Division 2, as among all other items, gear is in need of the most attention, as it affects all other facets of the game. All through the game, from the 1 to 30 level ups and into world tier 1 through 4, the gear grind made sense. Players were constantly looting and equipping better gear and weaponry in an attempt to increase their build strength. Bugs aside, if the Division 2 ended here at world tier 4 after the final stronghold was completed, I would have said bravo. The game plays really well up until you press the button to move to world tier 5, at which point you were flung off the deep end into a world of endless grinding for subpar gear and weaponry with no end in sight. The RNG system in world tier 5 is not just rough, it is downright punishing and discouraging to rookie and veteran players alike. It really feels like the looter and looter shooter gets completely removed and you were flung into the twilight zone for gear drops. So let's sort out this gear fiasco step by step, starting off with the actual gear roles, attributes, and talents. First off, we need every piece of branded gear to be available on every gear slot. End of story. I have no idea why I can lootercraft Gilligard brand set pieces on all six of my gear slots but Fenris Group AB is only available on the vest, holster, and knee pads. We need every piece on every slot to really stabilize and perfect our builds. I mean, I can't tell you how many times I have been in the zone while crafting a cool build, only to realize that I'm using an assault rifle and therefore needed a piece of Fenris gear. But my vest, holster, and knee pads are already taken up by really well-rolled pieces that aren't Fenris. And I'm sure there are millions of other players out there with the exact same scenario. Next up, we need to remove armor from the gear attribute roll calculations. Why should my build be restricted or even penalized for having a high armor roll? I mean, if RNG was on my side and I looted a mask with near max armor, a 50% damage to elite's attribute roll, an average health roll, and hard hitting, why should I then be penalized and not allowed to roll a really high health roll from another mask onto this one? Furthermore, how does this mystic gear calculator really work? Why does it divide the internal score points over the armor and attribute rolls, and therefore the more attributes you have, the lower they all are across the board? RNG in the Division 2 is punishing enough without putting further limitations and restrictions on what I can and can't do in terms of equipping gear and recalibrations. Also, since we're at this point in the video, I would like to suggest that we give players the ability to roll one attribute and one talent on each gear piece. And if there's no talent on the gear piece, give us the ability to recalibrate two attributes. And when I say recalibrate, I mean outside of the current stat classification it is. I want the ability to put like skill haste on a piece of gear in place of crit hit chance and so on. This could really help alleviate some of the harsh RNG in the game and could also free up stash space as we wouldn't need to constantly hoard gear that contains one small decent attribute roll. And speaking of attribute rolls, the variance between really low and god roll is just so insanely different. Just using the mass as an example, you can get damage to elites from a minimum of 4% all the way up to 51% on high end gear pieces. And it comes in half percentage increases and this is just one attribute. 
attribute min-max rolls need to be reduced so players can better gauge their builds and reduce this endless gear loot and deconstruction because the piece stinks loot loop. On a quick side note, and while I'm on the subject of recalibration, the costs are just too high. We're not able to carry enough resources to sustain a lengthy recalibration session. May I suggest that material stash is increased by a factor of 10 from 400 to 4,000. In addition, why are we not able to see how the recalibration will affect weapon damage until after the recalibration has been performed? Perhaps now is a really good time to install a weapon base damage figure so we can better gauge how well our weapon is stacking up prior to beginning a recalibration. Moving on to gear talents and well we just need a new batch of talents introduced here. I mean on paper some of these gear talents look really interesting but in reality they need a makeover. Talents like Mad Bomber and Two Order just aren't amounting to much and players have already gravitated to the old standbys like hard hitting and destructive. Switching over to gear and PvP and this is the area of the game that is completely off the rails because of the internal dimensions of the gear game. The 3.11.7 meta needs to be shredded and a new meta put in its place. Why a player can roll around with massive amounts of DPS, 3 to 500k armor and skills on tap is beyond me. Now I don't blame players or call them cheaters that have gravitated to this meta as they're just doing their best to survive and dominate in the DZ. Every player that enters the DZ for PvP is really after the same thing. So either you use this 3.11.7 build or you stand a really high chance of just getting folded. Internal limitations or caps need to be placed on this build concept or the gear talents and attribute roles need to be readjusted to promote a more balanced build meta. I can honestly see why players who don't normally go into the DZ start complaining just after a few minutes in there as they are constantly getting folded in half, not based on their skill or lack of skills, but due to their build deficiency and how other players have learned to exploit the internal parameters of this meta. Moving on to replayability, which in any looter shooter is a core element that is interwoven into the very fabric of the game design. Players have to be willing to engage and re-engage the grind in order to chase after sought after pieces of gear. The Division 2 has attempted to create this grind through the world tier systems and with the introduction of the invaded missions that rotate each week with the Black Tusk faction, but let's be honest. After a month or so of this concept and accumulating your desired exotic weaponry, this just doesn't work well. Now don't get me wrong, introducing a totally new faction and having them take over portions of the map was a new way of getting players to tackle missions and levels they had already cleared, but we need more, much more. The open world has been beautifully crafted and although I do find myself immersed in the street battles and faction shootouts in this game far more than I did in Div 1, we as a player base have really started to lose interest. What we need are many new elements all introduced at the same time in this next update. And I'd like to lay a few of them out for you right now. And some of these tie in together while others are complete standalones. What we need are modifiers. And I don't just mean difficulty modifiers, but weaponry and gear modifiers as well. Bring back global event style events right now. Force players to finish a mission using weaponry they might not be used to. Incentivize us to step outside of our comfort zones. Difficulty can be obtained by doing more than just making the NPCs more resilient and able to deal incredible amounts of damage. I remember those really difficult GE commendations like finishing Falcon Lost flawless or using shotguns only on Dragon's Nest. Or how about not using any heals through the missions without the entire squad wiping. I mean, we could work out all the small details, but we need those elements, those modifiers, right now. Next, we need targeted loot drops. Period. Full stop. Other than the crafted exotics and a few others like the Merciless and Pestilence, we can't actively target a specific mission or group of missions for a desired piece of loot. Higher difficulty missions like when we activate challenge or even heroic difficulty offer up players no higher chance of receiving better gear than hard difficulty. If I'm going to slog through a heroic difficulty mission, I want to receive better loot drops. I mean, it makes sense, right? I can't believe that superior gear still drops on heroic mode and I have still not received an exotic from the end bosses on any of my heroic clears. 
Back in Div 1, we would all run Lexington over and over again in the hopes of getting Larray Barrett's vest because when and if you killed her, you stood a chance of getting that exotic drop. In Div 2, I can't really tell when or where anything is going to drop for me and furthermore, I have no roadmap or plan of attack for getting better gear. Exotic drops are few and far between. And just to give you an example, I ran the Camp White Oaks mission on challenge difficulty over and over again and never received anything of note. But the moment I ran the Viewpoint Museum, which was on the invaded playlist, I received my very first pair of BTSU gloves. And all of this on just hard difficulty. Now besides the Eagle Bearer, I think that all exotics should be placed into the loot pool right now and players should have a chance to have them drop from any named elite boss. And let's not set the drop rates to it's never going to happen levels, but instead reward players by increasing their potential exotic drop rate by incentivizing them to re-engage missions back to back. Destiny used a similar concept and that if you continue to play missions from the daily mission list or strike list for each completion, your drop rate RNG would increase for the next mission and so on. Furthermore, I'd like to introduce a new tier of gear into the game, something along the lines of a legendary. I mean, it's not quite exotic tier, but it's better than high end. I've liked the introduction of actual quest lines, for example, the exotic holster, but where I think the team went a little sideways was in the static gear talent roles and attributes. RNG still needs to be present on these items so that players will still seek to chase after better versions of what they currently own. Legendary tier gear could give us that avenue to introduce better than high-end gear, but still keep RNG a part of the drop mechanics. And finally, also included in this replayability section would be weapon-specific combinations. And when I say weapon-specific, I mean weapon-specific. Incentivize players to break out and use an L86 and use it in a mission other than their trusty M60. I mean, you get the point of what I'm saying, but this could bring out some interesting builds and gear combos and bring in much needed variety to our weaponry and gear setups. Well, there you go, agents. My thoughts and possible recommendations for helping the Division 2 improve as we move forwards. As always, I look forward to reading your thoughts in the comment section below. If you could take the time to rate the video with a thumbs up or down, it would be greatly appreciated. If you like what you see, make sure to smash that sub button. And while you're here, click on the bell icon to receive all notifications from my YouTube channel. Follow me over on Twitter for all my latest thoughts concerning anything gaming related. And I do stream on Twitch, so look for me over on twitch.tv with weekly Division 2 streams. Until my next video, this is Lieutenant Buzz Lightbeer, signing off.